Hello friends. Today we'll talk about description and classification of speech sounds. The speech sounds are basically classified into consonants and vowels. In this class, we'll talk about description and classification of consonants. The consonants are basically classified into three different ways. And these three different ways are they are classified according to the position of vocal cords. Then they are classified according to the place of articulation. And lastly, they are classified according to their manner of articulation. So these are the three things that we have to remember. That they are classified according to the position of vocal cords. They are classified according to the place of articulation. And they are also classified according to the manner of articulation. Sound in English is actually a phoneme, and phoneme is a minimal contrastive unit of a sound. So when we describe a sound, we actually describe a phoneme or a minimal contrastive unit in three terms. And three terms, as I told you, depend on the position of the vocal cords, the place of articulation, and the manner of articulation. Let us first of all see the classification according to the position of the vocal cords. While learning organs of speech, we have seen that vocal cords are closed at one end and open at other end. Therefore, they are capable of assuming n number of positions, out of which three are important. Okay, now while describing these consonants, according to the position of vocal cords, we have two important positions. The first position is vocal cords drawn wide apart and the second is vocal cords held loosely together. Let us understand what happens. When vocal cords are drawn wide apart as we have seen earlier, when vocal cords are drawn wide apart, there is a big gap between them. This gap between the vocal cords is called glottis and air can freely escape through this glottis. Now when air freely escapes through this glottis, the vocal cords do not vibrate. That means air escapes without setting vocal cords into vibration. When air escapes without setting vocal cords into vibration, there is no mm, kind of sound. When, I mean, the air escapes without being accompanied by mm, this thing. So this actually is voice. Therefore, such sounds which are not accompanied by mm -hmm, we call them voiceless sounds. In other case, the vocal cords are held loosely together. When they are held loosely together, the air escapes by setting them into vibration. When the air escapes by setting them into vibration, the mm -hmm, is accompanied. That is the air escapes by a, it's marked by a certain kind of sound. Now this mm is voice. Therefore we call these sounds voice sounds. So first classification and first description, both the things of English consonants depends on position of vocal cords and it is either voiceless or voiced. I mean if, you are, if we are considering a particular sound, it's either voiced or voiceless. This is the first term level out of three term levels given to a let us have an example of voice and voiceless sounds. Say for example, we are trying to produce a bilabial sound. Or we are trying to produce a sound with the help of two lips. Okay, see the mechanism. I am taking the air out through the vocal cords. The position of vocal cords is they are held wide apart, so they, are, they do not vibrate. And I'm blocking the air with the help of my two lips and suddenly trying to release it. See. So this is actually a voiceless sound. Now the same sound, what I try to do is I try to hold my vocal cords close together so that they vibrate. And the same sound I try to produce. Look at this. So what we have seen is is voiceless is voiced for example initial sound in the word pen 
is voiceless and initial sound in the word bat is voiced. This is the first thing. Let us have another example. Let us have an example of s and z. What I am trying to do is I am trying to form a narrow gap between my tongue and the tip ridge and trying to release the air out. In the first sound, see, s, vocal cords do not vibrate. As vocal cords do not vibrate, this sound is called voiceless sound. sound. Look at the second sound. First is voiceless, second is voiced. Examples are initial sound in the word sit and initial sound in the word zoo. We can see the difference between voiceless and voiced sounds. In English, we have pairs. Say for example, we have a pair of voiceless dental and voiced dental. See. Initial sounds in the word think and that. Or say for example, this is the difference caused by the position of vocal cords. I mean, in one case they are held wide apart, in other case they are held loosely together. In other words, they in one case they do not vibrate, and in another case they vibrate. When they vibrate, sounds are voiced. When they do not vibrate, sounds are voiceless. This is the basic thing that we have to remember. But remember, all the vowels in English are voiced. All the nasal sounds in English are voiced. Only a few sounds like This we have to understand. So most of the sounds in English are voiced and some of the sounds in English are voiceless. This classification and the description whether a particular sound is voiced and voiceless depends on the position of vocal cords. And how many positions of vocal cords we are talking about? We are just talking about two positions of the vocal cords, whether they are held wide apart or whether, whether they are held loosely together, that means whether they vibrate or whether they do not vibrate. If they vibrate, sound produced is voiced. If they do not vibrate, sound produced is voiceless.